Hey guys, Alex Turner here. I just wanted to make sure you guys knew that I grew out my beard so that I could look more professional and so people would take me more seriously. So thank you very much and uh, let's get into the video. I mean, come on guys, am I not a spitting image? So this has been a highly requested video and this beard is gonna get annoying. And originally I wanted to do Arctic Monkeys in you know, one of their earlier styles because those are the ones I'm more familiar with. I ended up switching to Tranquility Base after some people asked me specifically to do that one. Also, it just came out, so it seems more fitting. If you guys like this one, I might try some of their other albums, so make sure you stick around to the end where I'll have a full song for us to listen to, and uh, let's get into the video. Also, my kitty is climbing on my lap right now. He literally just did that on his, on his own. This is what I live with on a daily basis. End me. I'm just kidding, he's awesome. Look at him. He got his belly shaved, you can see. This album was a huge change of pace for Arctic Monkeys, though it was kind of a progression from AM, which is their last album that came out about five years ago at this point, right? This album was like mostly spacey lounge music mixed with psychedelic rock and kind of some of their, their AM style, especially in songs like 4 out of 5. And I really enjoyed the bass groove on songs like that, so I decided I wanted my song to build off of that style a little bit more. But anyways, let's just get into it. So the first thing I wanted to do was get a bass groove, because there's a lot of songs on the album where bass is a prominent instrument. Of course, Alex got a piano uh, before the creation of this album, and that's what led a lot of the songs to incorporate piano into the album. And there will be piano in our song, but again, I just wanted to start with the bass groove. And to do that, I gotta get you off my lap, kitty. I'm sorry, you're cute. I just, I can't do that right now. Obviously just saying, I'm gonna write a bass groove is a very gene generic thing to say. Specifically, I wanna write a bass groove that is slow, somewhat steady, maybe choppy, and most likely minor as well. So you don't wanna write something that sounds like Cause that technically is a bass groove, but that's not what we're looking for. I settled on something that along the lines of This album is very experimental in nature, so picking things that are a little bit different than what you normally do is probably a great idea to, to get the type of sound you're looking for. Yeah, the reason I got this beard on here was totally not because I couldn't grow out my own. Don't judge me, guys. It looked like some bizarre mixture of a rocker and, like, Gandalf? Additionally, you're probably going to want to use a pick for a lot of the bass grooves. I've just noticed that in this specific album, to get that type of punchy sound you're looking for, because otherwise you're gonna have really smooth lines, which are good on specific types of songs. Like if you think of Feel It Still by Portugal the Man, if you want that type of sound, you're gonna wanna use a pick. So the bass groove is gonna be a main feature of the verses, and then in the chorus, I kind of want the song to wash away into a smooth flowing sound. So the verses are gonna be contrasted, choppy, bass groovy versus watery, smooth choruses. It's not a particular formula that's necessarily used in the album, but those are two of the contrasting points that I see when I listen to the album. Also a lot of weird lyrics, but we'll get to that later. We have the main bass groove. Now let's show you the chords that I'm going to pick for the chorus, which is going to be a little bit weird which will be fun. Again, you want to probably use a lot of strange chord progressions because they're used a lot in the album. I won't be using a acoustic in the actual song because I want it to have that reverb soaked sound that I'll show you more when we're doing the production side, but I'm just gonna show you it on an acoustic because it's easier to, because it's easier to show. My chord progression for the chorus is going to be something like this. Those are the two major parts of the song. The last section is going to be a solo section where the song builds up a little bit more and then it's gonna break back down into the last chorus, which will be a shorter chorus and then it won't be repeated like I showed you here. 
If you're new here, you might not know I don't have a drum set. All of the drums are going to be done on a computer, which is unfortunate. That means we're going to have to head into the program Cubase to show you what I did for the drum set. A lot of the charm of this album comes from the production side of things and how reverb soaked stuff is, how it sounds spacey and smooth and relaxed. La la la, program's loading in. Cat attack! Come on, you're supposed to be vicious, not cute. Uh oh, okay, I'll back away, back away, let him sleep. So one of the first things you guys might notice is that I doubled up the guitar part with the bass part so this green section right here on the top is the main bass line. And let's solo that for a second. So that's the part that I had shown you guys. But something that they do multiple times throughout the album is double up on bass parts with the guitar parts. So this muted guitar part is mimicking the exact same line. And then of course I threw a lot of reverb on the guitar parts. Doubling up instruments like this can make it sound a lot fuller. This bass line is going to sound more prominent in the mix because it's being played on more than one instrument. I actually have it mimicked on the piano part as well. Throughout the album there are very few like stereotypical boring drum beats. So you're going to want to write something that's a little bit erratic. Maybe not necessarily erratic but definitely not a standard drum beat. So typically when you have a drum beat, it'd be like dun dun k k dun k dun dun k And if I were writing a, a drum part for this song, if it were my own song, I would probably do that. But because I'm writing it in their style, they might make it a little bit more complex. So the red part here is the drum beat. I of course soaked this in reverb, so it's gonna sound very spacey and roomy and you know, extra spazzy. And here it is a little bit simplistic at the beginning, but it's also a little strange. Like, it's not what you necessarily would expect. And that's a theme throughout this album, is things are not necessarily what you would expect going into Arctic Monkeys' album. For the part where the drums get a little stranger, I added a, a phaser. And if you're unsure of what a phaser is, it kind of makes it sound like stuff is underwater and like flowing back and forth a little bit. It's hard to explain. But you can hear the effect here probably a little bit. This phaser is also added to guitar parts to make the song really pop. You want to get these different soundscapes in different sections, especially ones that are not typically in straightforward rock music. Also throughout the album, they have these sort of strange synthy organy sounds. So I added one that was pretty simple here. And you'll hear it. I'm going to solo it so you can hear it on its own. Of course, again, it has cor the chorus effect can make this the instrument sound a little bit bigger and also can make it sound a little bit stranger, which is exactly what we're going for. And this part is turned down really low but it does add some nice texture to the song. Then, because there are so many intricate sections of these songs, in the middle of a verse, I added a section where it kind of explodes a little bit into a louder type of vibe. And then it just goes back to the verse. Then for the bridge, I'll show you what I ended up doing. I tried to make it sound a little more epic and a little crazier than perhaps the earlier parts of the songs that are a little more chill sounded. So this part turns into like a typical kind of rock solo, but it, keeping with that drenched reverb and phaser effect that we have established from earlier in the song. There's fuzz guitars used throughout the record. So these two tracks are solo that are mimicked left and right with the phaser effect. And then the song is done, but now we have to go over some vocal stuff. 
<clears throat> so sophisticated and serious, <laughs> yes. So obviously, I don't have Alex Turner's voice, so don't judge me on that. But, if you want to t sound a little bit similar to him, try to make your voice sound a little deeper than you normally would, and maybe emphasize notes a little bit less, and emphasize a talking sound more. So rather than singing something like, la la la, you'd be like, la la la. I wrote my lyrics because this whole album is like a science fiction focused album. I kind of wrote mine about like a, a world where you could go back in time and travel and all that stuff, but you would lose things and you would lose track of what's present and past. Alex Turner's talked about how science fiction material has been a big inspiration for him, of course, with the name like Tranquility Base. It's a little space sounding. So I went along that same vibe. There's a couple awkward lyrics in there, just like in the, uh, in the, uh, you know, actual album. It came out pretty well. Here's a taste of what the song will sound like. And then after this, you guys can hear the final product. So usually if you've been around for some of my other episodes, vocals have been a huge part of the production where you have like, you know, 10 vocal tracks and a bunch of harmonies and stuff. They went a little minimalistic here on the vocals because Alex's voice is so unique on his own. It doesn't really need any extra stuff. It has, of course, a huge amount of delay, just like Royal Blood does. So I threw that on there. But once you throw the delay on, you throw some compression, maybe some reverb and EQ, all you gotta do is kind of speak sing all of the words. So I'm gonna solo what my voice sounds like here. Take a while just to float with me. I'll take away the jet stream. Make it easier and easier. My vocal lines might even be a little bit fast there for what he typically does in Tranquility Bass, but you can hear me go. And you can hear that that's, that's typically the relaxed vibe that he went for throughout the album. Then the chorus, I kind of changed it up a little bit and went a little bit higher pitched, added a little bit of backing vocals. So you can hear there, even when I'm on the high notes, I'm still managing to kind of scoop up to them, make it sound deep, even though it's not. It's like higher up. My voice doesn't naturally sound like that, so it probably doesn't come out nearly as well as it does when Alex does it. But that's the best you're gonna get out of me. I hope you guys enjoy the final product. It's gonna play right at the end of this. If you enjoyed any of this video, make sure you check out my other ones. I've covered a lot of bands, probably one you like. And if not, Maybe try out checking my own music. I just released an album and I'm sure there's something there you might like as well. So those are all gonna be linked in the description. And thank you so much for watching. Any information you need, all my social media is in the description, so just check there. I think the next one I'm gonna do in this series will probably be My Chemical Romance, Three Cheers for Sweet Revenge, because I did The Black Parade as my first video and I think it'd be cool to go back to that now. And thank you guys so much for watching. Finally. Ugh. No, my beard.
Let's see if Kitty likes the beard. I think he already has a big enough mane. He probably doesn't need that. It's like, get out of here. Whoa. 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 Aggressive. 